Hey! What a rip-off! Hey guys, Rainer and Chase here, exercise my first to memorize vlog style. Here with the ward analysis that I've been itching to make for a long ass time, but kept putting it off because of how much of a doozy I knew it would be to research. Not only is this one of those terms that I've seen get thrown around a lot to the point of misuse, just like the rest of the stuff I talk about in this series, but it relates to a much bigger problem that I'll get to later in the video. This ward analysis is going to be on the word ripoff. Lol, well, this is rich coming from a ripoff of Cover Killer Nation and Razor Fist. So what is a ripoff typically defined as? Well, in entertainment, it's basically something that copies something else, or steals something from something else. I'll give some examples of things I find to be legit ripoffs. In movies, an example of a ripoff would be those shitty, not Disney and not DreamWorks movies I hate everything made videos on, where it's obvious those no-name studios are trying to cash in on the popularity of movies like Frozen, Ratatouille, etc. So they jack the character designs and general plot to make their own cute little versions. It's different than having a generally similar story, like the case with the former highest grossing film, Avatar, having a similar setup and theme to movies like Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves, but doesn't come off like it's trying to outright jack them. It is a similar story, but I don't like calling it an outright ripoff. Another popular discussion topic when it comes to ripoffs in movies is The Lion King supposedly ripping off the 60s anime called Kimba the White Lion. Believe it or not, Matthew Broderick actually signed on to voice Simba thinking he was going to be voicing Kimba in a Kimba the White Lion movie since the character designs look pretty damn similar and, well, Kimba rhymes with Simba. You must avenge my death, Kimba. I mean, Simba. But from what I can gather watching Saber Sparks video on the subject, since I've never watched the show before, that's sort of where the similarities end, since the story of the Lion King has more in common with Hamlet. Kid's uncle kills the king dad and usurps the throne. Boom. I can buy that some of the characters' designs might have been based on Kimba, but I'm not sure I want to call the Lion King a ripoff either. In the world of YouTube, one thing that comes to mind when thinking of ripoffs was when there was this guy called the Satiritician, is that guy still around? Who had an avatar that bared some striking resemblance to that of Armored Skeptic, and got called a Skeptic clone because of it. And there have also been lots of issues where someone on here plagiarized from someone else, like when Matthew Santoro was called out by Grade A Under. A fuck I miss that guy. That's the main thing that I associate with ripoffs, is when there's outright plagiarism, which you really don't need me to tell you, but plagiarism's bad, okay? The main discussion here is of course going to be about music. Now, what I define as a ripoff in music is when an artist steals lyrics or steals a riff or lengthy melody line in either the vocals or the lead instrument. The kind of thing I'm talking about is stuff like when our old pals Blood on the Dance Floor stole lyrics from Otep Shemaya's song, Rise, Rebel, Resist. And another example is something I remember pointing out in my What's Wrong With on Five Figure Death Punch. I don't know where I'm going, but I know just where I've been. I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. <laughs> and as far as riffs go, one classic example is Brain Stew by Green Day, ripping off 25 or 6 to 4 by Chicago. Another thing you could look at as an example is The Case of Treasure by Bruno Mars. Bruno wrote the song with the intent of sampling a song called Baby I'm Yours by Breakbot. Hey guys, Future Shades here. Just letting you know before the video continues that I did a test upload of this video just to see if anything was going to get claimed and the clip that you're about to see here got the video partially blocked. So I was forced to go back into editing and make some modifications to the clip, both visually and audially, to ensure that yes, I am being transformative with my usage of this clip and it does meet fair use guidelines. I know what the fuck I'm doing. But he was told, no. So what he did instead was more or less re-record the instrumental himself in C minor instead of D minor. Sorry, perfect pitch, gotta point it out. And eventually gave writer's credit to Mr. Breakbot since he didn't really have any reason not to. Now with that said, do I still like Treasure and Brain Stew? Yes! For what they are, I think they're both great songs. But the similarities are undeniable, to the point where if you call them rip-offs, I wouldn't exactly disagree. Since I mentioned sampling, I'll differentiate that from ripping off, because that's one thing that a lot of people confuse, especially if they aren't as knowledgeable about rap. What sampling is, is taking a clip of something for your own work. I do that in just about every single one of my videos, including this one. Under fair use, of course. In music, you see this done in rap a lot. Sampling a sound or instrument from a pre-existing work and using it in their songs is actually a key characteristic of rap. For example, in one of my favorite rap songs, Cream by Wu-Tang Clan, they sample a song called As Long As I've Got You by an R&B group called The Charmels.
That clip you just heard was the part of the song that Wu-Tang used for their sample that you hear throughout the song, though it's pitched up a half step. Again, perfect pitch, gotta point it out. And there are countless examples throughout rap that utilize this method with creative production, though in the 90s it was made law that the artist you're sampling from get a writer's credit. That's why when you look at a song like You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer for a classic example, you see Rick James, bitch! listed as a writer, since it almost sounds like Hammer's just rapping over an instrumental version of Super Freak. Which that's different than what a parody artist like Weird Al Yankovic does. He uses the instrumental from a song and builds his lyrics around the original melody, and so he gives writers credits as well. As I've talked about in videos before, parody is one thing that constitutes something as falling under fair use, which is why Weird Al is able to do what he does. But since rappers aren't sampling with the intent of parodying the original song, while I'd argue it could fall under fair use since they aren't using more from the original work than necessary and their sampling has no negative effect on the market for the original work, sampling laws don't seem to think so. This is legal jargon that I admittedly am not the most clued in on, but the bottom line is that's how sampling as well as parody music differentiates from ripping off. Anyway, that's the basic gist of what constitutes something as a ripoff to me, because outside of things like that, the kind of things I see get called ripoffs are in actuality what's called a pastiche, which if you don't know what that word means, it means a work that imitates another work, and that's going to be a bit of a recurring theme throughout this video. One thing I knew I wanted to talk about in this video was something that I would have included in my What's Wrong With About Avenged Sevenfold had A, I actually scripted my shit at the time, along with just being a good content creator in general, and B, it was being talked about at the time before Hail to the King was released, and that would be their Death Bat logo supposedly ripping off over Overkill. Oh boy, I can feel the metal elitists getting ready to whine at me again. For one, Overkill's Death Bat has horns, while Sevenfold's doesn't. For two, Queensryche actually used the Death Bat nine months before Overkill formed. And for three, the Death Bat has existed in architecture as a staple in statues and sculptures centuries before anyone in Queensryche was even born. So it's not like Sevenfold, Overkill, or Queensryche were even original with the concept from the get-go. Just to be clear, I'm not calling Queensryche ripoffs, and I'll get to why in a little bit. I'm only using your logic against you, as is necessary in a debate. I also remember seeing Sacred Reek post on their Facebook some years ago about Five Finger Death Punch's army skull supposedly ripping off this character of theirs. Sure, it's a similar concept, but I wouldn't say it was ripped off. The coloring's a little different, Sacred Reek's skull doesn't have that knuckle thing in his mouth, we see his eyes, and he has hair. This to me is more so a coincidence that Sacred Reek decided to blow out of proportion just because it's Five Finger Death Punch. Again, this is more of a pastiche. And all this is kind of ironic, considering Stormtroopers of Death used this design for their album Speak English or Die before either Sacred Reek or Five Finger Death Punch. So by their logic, they'd be ripping off SOD. Again, I'm not calling Sacred Reek ripoffs, just using their logic against them. But that leads to my main point. Why should that matter? Every idea has been done, Butters, even before The Samsons. Yeah! In fact, that episode was a ripoff of a Twilight Zone episode. Really? So I shouldn't care if I come up with an idea and The Simpsons already did it. Just about everything in media is based on something pre-existing. Be it The Simpsons basing that portion of Treehouse of Horror off of Twilight Zone, be it Disney basing their most famous movies off of fairy tales, be it songs or artists that have sounds based on something that came before them. Even if it might not be the most original piece of work, it doesn't mean it can't still be good or enjoyable for what it is. Pretty much all the music we listen to takes influence from something pre-existing. For example, one of my favorite bands, Red Hot Chili Peppers, a band I'd say has a pretty unique sound, has influences ranging from Stevie Wonder, who they of course covered, to James Brown, to Black Sabbath, Sabbath, to Fugazi, to Santana, and a bunch more. Even Black Sabbath, the pioneers of heavy metal, take influence from Led Zeppelin, Cream, Jimi Hendrix, and even the Beatles. Do you see them being called ripoffs because of that? No? Didn't think so. How about Pliny, since I'm wearing the shirt? He was influenced by Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, John Petrucci, and Guthrie Govan. Wouldn't call him a ripoff of any of them. Even my guitar playing takes very strong influence from Joe Satriani and Andy Timmons. Just like with YouTube, my primary influences are Muse Productions and Cover Killer Nation. Though nowadays I see some implementations of ARTV, Become the Night, Some Black Guy, Todd in the Shadows, Emp Lemon, and my friends Nate Talks to You and Official GATG in this style I've cultivated. My point is, even if you have a sound or a style that's considered original, there's gonna be influence that you take from something else, just like I talked about in my video, Acknowledge Your Influences. Of course, this is especially the case for the bands I'm going to talk about in this next portion of the video, throwback bands. These are bands that take on a sound that pays tribute to a sound from a previous time period, and they wear that influence on their sleeves. There are countless examples of these. You got Buck Cherry and their Guns N' Roses 80s hard rock sound, The Darkness and their heavy Queen sound, Wolf Mother and their sludgy Zeppelin meets Sabbath sound, bands like White Wizard, who I've referred to as the American Iron Maiden, bands like Spock's Beard, who I would call the American Yes, the Stray Cats if you want on an example of an older band that has a 50s country jazz rock and roll sound, and of course Steel Panther and their modernized 80s glam metal sound. Even pop artists like Bruno Mars and The Weeknd have a throwback vibe to them with sounds comparable to Michael Jackson and Prince, and that's a big reason why they're two of my favorite pop acts of the past decade. With all these artists, it's obvious they're taking on a sound that's associated with a time period from the past. They might have a similar sound, writing style, or production style, but I think it's unfair to say that they're ripping that time period off, especially because the end result is something new that wasn't plagiarized or jacked. If anything, this is just a tribute. 
It's almost like that's how genres work or something. And this is going to lead into a pseudo what's wrong with discussion about a band that's been getting a lot of negative reactions for this very reason, Greta Van Fleet. This is a band that's been called a Led Zeppelin clone since they have a sound that is very similar to them, to say the least. Here's a little sample. I don't know how popular or unpopular of an opinion this is, but I don't hate this band. I actually kinda like them. They have a sound that a number of different bands I listen to have utilized, the bluesy hard rock sound, and I don't dislike that sound. So with that being the case, why would I hate Greta Van Fleet for playing in that style? The only real problem I have with them is more so a problem with the boomers and their audience saying they're bringing back rock and roll, which as you'd know from watching my bashing a band for their fans video and my why I hate the rock is dead argument video, I think is a lame problem to have with a band anyway. While it's undeniable that Greta Van Fleet bears striking resemblance to Led Zeppelin, I wouldn't say they're ripping them off. From what I've listened to from them, it doesn't sound like they're jacking any riffs or stealing lyrics from Led Zeppelin, they're just playing in that same bluesy hard rock style. There really shouldn't be anything wrong with that, especially given the derivative nature of media in general. It's fine to not like Greta Van Fleet if they're just not your thing, or their take on the bluesy hard rock sound just doesn't do anything for you, but calling them a ripoff seems a bit much. Especially when you consider that they're not even the first band to take on a sound that's comparable to Led Zeppelin. I mentioned Wolf Mother previously, but two other bands that come to mind that got compared to Led Zeppelin a lot are Kingdom Come and Whitesnake. If you listen to the riffs on Kingdom Come's self-titled 1988 debut, you can tell there's a Led Zeppelin flair there. Like, listen to this. Doesn't that sound like something Led Zeppelin would write? It does, doesn't it? But just like with Greta Van Fleet, contrary to what Jimmy Page himself actually said about them at the time in 1988, I'm gonna respectfully disagree by saying there's a difference between ripping riffs right off and writing and playing in that same style, which is what Kingdom Come are doing. Same thing with Whitesnake. I remember my first time listening to Still of the Night, I thought that the main riff sounded like a blend of the riffs from Black Dog and Immigrant Song. Not to mention the quiet part in the bridge where you hear the stepped hi-hat and David Coverdale going, Oh baby! Reminded me a lot of the middle part of Whole Lot of Love. So that's three Zeppelin songs that Still of the Night reminds me of, which is why I always viewed the song as sort of a love letter to Led Zeppelin. The influence is very apparent, and that resulted in Whitesnake getting compared to Zeppelin a lot. And the Zeppelin comparisons actually led to Coverdale teaming up with Jimmy Page, who himself was kind of trying to stick it to Robert Plant, for a short-lived project called Coverdale Page in the early 90s after Whitesnake went on hiatus. And of course, the Zeppelin influence was apparent there too. I also love the symbolic nature of that album cover. But these aren't rip-offs, they just take noticeable influence. Again, so many things in entertainment take at least some influence from pre-existing media. It's kind of an impossibility to be completely pure. And that's okay. If it weren't okay, you'd be seeing bands sue each other left and right just for sounding like them. And I don't think you need me to tell you this, but... That would be fucking stupid. It's already dumb enough that we have these stupid music industry lawsuits. The idea that media in general derives from something pre-existing should mean that these lawsuits shouldn't exist. And Satriani, I love you, but you're taking Coldplay to court for Viva La Vida, allegedly jacking the chorus melody from If I Could Fly from Is There Love in Space, is unfortunately an example of this. Now here's the thing, I see where Satch was coming from. I ain't gonna deny that the melodies are pretty similar, but you can tell that there are some differences between the two and they aren't carbon copies. Between this and other music industry lawsuits, I'm not as hard on this one, not just because Satriani is my favorite musician, but because it's at least understandable why he would feel his melody was jacked. It's at least more understandable than some of the other lawsuits I've heard about over the years. Such be the case when Katy Perry was sued by this rapper called Flame for this. That's literally the minor scale. You know how many songs exist that are written in A minor in the case of Joyful Noise and B flat minor in the case of Dark Horse? A shit ton. And it's such a simple combination of notes, which makes this sound even more petty. I get that there are only 12 notes in the chromatic scale, and there's only so much you can do with them in terms of melodies, harmonies, and chords, and I get that popular music in general is often written in a very scalar fashion, but I hate when people sue over it. I don't even like Katy Perry, or that song. I featured it in Worst Songs of 2014, after all, but she did not deserve this. Same with Juice World. May God rest his soul whose song Lucid Dreams, another song I featured in the Worst Song series, was alleged to have jacked its melody from Yellow Card's song Hollywood Died from Lights and Sounds. You left me falling and landing inside my grave I know that you want me dead Accidents out on the highway to somewhere They tell us about when we're young Now I love Yellow Card, but... 
come the fuck on. Just like with the Katy Perry song, this is such a simple and common combination of notes in a given scale. Not to mention, I pointed out a similar thing about the song in Worst Songs of 2018. I still see your shadows in my room. I can understand if this was an instance like with Satriani and Coldplay where it's a distinct melody and more than just a few notes, but in the cases of Flame vs. Katy Perry and Yellow Card vs. Juice World, it's a mere coincidence and a total nitpick. But none of these hold a candle to probably the dumbest music industry lawsuit of all time, and I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm thinking of. Yes, we're gonna talk about the lawsuit between Robin Thicke, T.I., and Pharrell Williams, and the family of Marvin Gay where they alleged that their 2013 hit song Blurred Lines stole from Marvin Gaye's song Got To Give It Up. Why? Because it had a similar feel. Because it had a similar feel. Because it had a similar feel. A similar feel. A similar feel. A similar feel. You're an idiot! Gee, it's almost like these are in the same friggin' genre or something. This is one of the most retarded things I've ever heard in my life. When you're playing in a style or tempo or meter, of course some things are bound to sound similar. Just like when you're writing in a particular key, mode, or even tuning, some things might sound similar. The Blurred Lines lawsuit is the equivalent of someone suing an artist because they used this beat, or this chord progression. I hate to be all slippery slope here, but if shit ever gets to that point, the industry will probably begin going on a downward spiral leading to the death of music with everyone suing each other, and we'll be in dire need of the wisdom of Petey the Don't Sue People Panda. That makes me a sad panda. I might not know a lot about copyright law and music, but I do know melodies and lyrics are the only things in music you can make a case for in court. You can't sue over a drum beat, chord progression, or feel. Frankly, the fact that the court decided in favor of Marvin Gaye's family and gave him a writer's credit on Blurred Lines really makes me resent the legal system more than I already do. It'd be one thing if Robin Thicke's sampled Got to Give It Up, which would justify the writer's credit, but it's not even that. Out of all the trials I've mentioned in this video, this is the one that I wholeheartedly believe absolutely should not have happened the most, and thus I do not respect Marvin Gaye's family. Don't get me wrong, Marvin Gaye was a great artist and he put out one of the greatest memes in music, but to put it bluntly, GO FUCK YOURSELVES! <sighs> A big reason this pisses me off so much is because this is the industry I'm wanting to go into. I would like to not have to one day deal with anyone claiming I'm plagiarizing anything outside of melody and lyrics, which I would aim to not do because again, plagiarism's bad, okay? It would be a waste of my time and it would be a waste of the court's time. If someone's stealing your lyrics or using a very distinct melody of yours to the point where it's not just a silly dink, go ahead, sue their ass. I'll sue ya! I'll take all your money! But if that isn't the case, if it's regarding anything other than those two things, leave them alone because they aren't ripping anyone off. Let throwback bands be throwback bands. Let bands play the genre they want to play and wear their influences on their sleeve. Let art continue to be derivative of pre-existing media, and let people not have to worry about living up to an impossibly high standard of originality so they don't get shat on or even sued. Save the ripoff accusations for actual plagiarism and actual theft. Otherwise, you're pretty much defeating the main purpose of music. Entertainment. Uh-oh, that's not an original chord progression or an original melody, somebody better sue Jesse J. Thus concludes this discussion of what a ripoff is and isn't. I hope you enjoyed this analysis because it's just what I love doing on here. Before I end this video, I just want to let you guys know that I started a Discord server, the Discord in Shades. We talk about music, video related things, various things going on, etc. If you're interested in joining, the link is in the description. Other than that, thank you for watching this video, take care and have a nice day. I'm Shades, and I'll see you next time.